Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed podcast with Bonnie Seratori. I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Seratori is a master energy tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. You can find all her work at spiritualacceleration.com, including all episodes of Consciousness Unleashed podcast. And in today's episode, it's going to be a really uh, good one because it's about um, the concept of feeling broken. So to not just feeling broken, but feeling like you're too broken to be fixed. And uh, I wanted to bring up this topic because there actually is a group energy clearing coming up uh, this month in May called Too Broken to be Fixed. And I think that not only do we want to um, have people go to that group clearing because it's really important. To, this one, I feel, is a very important one to go to. Um, but really having the kind of context and understanding of what it is that Bonnie will be helping you with will actually help you to take in that clearing and that healing when you when you actually attend, um, you'll be able to take it in even deeper. Would you agree with that, Bonnie? If you have that sort of context, you could kind of take in a lot of your clearings uh, even deeper. Is that all right? Yes. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's definitely my intention for today's podcast episode. Um, so, Bonnie, let's just get into this because it's a big topic. I have quite a few questions, and I, I want to first ask you about just your definition, your perspective of what exactly is wholeness and then what is brokenness. <laughs> All righty. Okay. For me, wholeness really does mean that we are living in a state of awareness. We are living where we are not holding ourselves back, we are not being interfered with, within our own self. Like, you know, we have uh, thoughts, we have inhibitions, we can actually feel where our body like shuts down or clamps down or where we're not able to express ourselves, to share who we are, uh, where we're giving ourselves away, where we're doing things we don't want to do, where we're, <clears throat> where we are actually, um, you know, overcompensating, overgiving, overdoing, because we have this emotional angst. We have a feeling within that keeps us from just being our true authentic self from, you know, it's like that feeling of we are just free. Like in any moment, we're not thinking about our thoughts, our actions, what we're saying. We are just showing up and being our true self. Okay. There's no angst. There's no wounded. It's just like, Alrighty, and, you know, we come forward, we're here, we laugh, we play, we feel happy, we have joy. We're not afraid of life. Uh, we step into life when our heart is open. We love being here and we love all of humanity and we're not judging, finding fault. Um, we're not finding ourselves making other people wrong or that we're not playing the victim. We're not doing the blame game. You know, you did this to me. Oh, poor me. Why is this happening? We All that's not there when our heart is open, when we're really whole and complete. Wholeness means we are shining our light. It means we are connected with who we really are, our authentic self, the authentic me that everyone is, where we're just really just sharing that gift, the, the true energy, the true gift of who we are, okay? Broken, <laughs> shattered, broken, which is all of humanity, including, you know, I'm not eliminating myself. I was shattered, broken, okay? But that place where we're, what's happening is we're carrying over lots of uh, wounding from the past, okay? We're recreating scenarios so we can heal ourselves. So not only do we have all of the past life energies inside of us, the misperceptions and beliefs and conclusions that we have, we also uh, reinforce those same beliefs by our experiences here. But remember, we're creating from the subconscious. So when we feel broken, or we're feeling too much, it's too much, I can't, I can't get a grip, I can't find my way in the world. And we don't, sometimes we don't want to be here. Some people actually check out, okay. So the brokenness is actually coming because we're no longer connecting with our true divine light. We are in the egoic state, the false self state, the shattered, broken, because of things that happen and how we misinterpret, how we take things personally, we make it all about us. So if someone says something to us or does something to us that's hurtful, you know, we take it personally and then we begin to believe there's something wrong with us. So 
we have all these misperceptions, we have all these conclusions, we have lots and lots of wounding coming from the past. And some people, it's like they can't function in the world, you know, like a lot of people have severe PTSD, or they've been abused, emotionally abused, physically abused, mentally abused, sexually abused. If it's severe enough, these people may never come out of it, you know, they live their lives in, in a state of, you know, victimization and and fear and anxiety and worry and stress. There's no connection with their own higher levels. There's no connection with creation itself that we know that there's a divine plan unfolding. And we're all a part of it. You know, we all, we feel victimized. And when we're victimized, then we're always making it somebody else's fault. You know, you did this to me. Why are you doing this to me? And then we have that feeling of being forsaken. Most everyone has, well, everyone does have forsaken in there. So, you know, it inhibits and blocks us from just that being in life, being in that free flow, just feeling comfortable, relaxed, at peace, just being who we are. So it's a major, major difference, you know, and we're all seeking to be liberated. That's what we're really doing, to be happy, to be liberated, to be who we really are. And we can't do that when we got all this wounding, when we got heartache and heartbreak and We've been betrayed or rejected or abandoned or undermined or humiliated. You know, it's like we have great pain. I see, like, and I see people in that too broken to be fixed. There's like, I call it the well of grief. I discovered that well of grief back, this was like way the heck back, back in like 80, 80, 1988. And everyone's got it. It's just a collection and collection and collection of lifetimes of severe hurt, heartache, heartbreak despondency, despair. So, you know, we have all these energies in us and there's just no way we can shine our light when we are experiencing a lot of, you know, um, shattered pain, anguish, all the, the pain that we've experienced, this, you know, the wounding, I call it the wounding, you know, and, you know, so people's journey is to find our way back to the self to, to really begin to share who we are. And when you're severely wounded without some kind of help or maybe intervention or support or something, you know, you're going to live a life of, you know, pain and suffering. So big difference. So Bonnie, I actually had this question for like later, but since you just brought out the well of grief, I think we should just get into this um, next question I have for you. So there was a question a few months ago in a live Q&A. Somebody brought up and asked the question if they were to just focus on one emotion out of all the emotions or all the different things that they could focus on to heal, what would it be? And you said grief. Mm -hmm. And so you brought up grief again today and you talked about the well of grief. So could you talk about the significance of that particular emotion so people can know why and, and if this could help people to, if they're feeling too broken to be fixed, it could be overwhelming. The whole healing journey could be very overwhelming. They might have that same question too. Where do you even start? And yeah. so I think this would be really great for them to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you think about it, everything like, for example, when we've been rejected, we feel sad. We have a grief, okay? When we've been betrayed, we get hurt. When we've been abandoned, we get hurt, okay? When we lose love, we get hurt. All of these, emo all these experiences that we are experiencing cause a feeling of some kind of sadness. Now, that sadness, like for example, being betrayed has a different quality of sadness as opposed to being abandoned. Okay, so all of these emotions, they all have that same kind of sad, but each one will have a slightly different tinge to it, a slightly different feel to it. So I can feel when I'm feeling the sadness around being abandoned, or I can feel the sadness around being betrayed or rejected or judged, okay? But, all, but basically, it's still sad. It's still a grief inside. And we have so much grief carried over from past lives and we've had so many intense experiences that we don't have memory of that are causing this feeling of sad. This is how that well of grief begins to get filled up over lifetime after lifetime after lifetime because we aren't clearing and healing the grief. You know, we, people don't know how to do their inner work. They don't know what it means to face the grief and go through it. 
people think that, oh, I cried. I cried about my this or that, or I cried my dad died or my mother died or, you know, my husband abandoned me, my wife betrayed me. We know we we cry, but we're telling, we're in the story crying and, and nothing will change in that. We can cry for eternity and nothing will change, okay? So people don't know how to do their inner work. But the 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 bottom line is this, anybody who's starting off and it does feel so overwhelming, What's the best thing to do is just pick one issue, one thing that's happened in your life, one thing, and let yourself go through that, okay? And then you'll be ready for the next piece. But basically, when we have a well of grief, a person is in a constant state of sadness. You can see it in their eyes. It doesn't matter if they're at a party or at a wedding or whatever, no matter what, the, the, you can look in someone's eyes and see the sadness that's there. And everyone has a well of grief, everyone. So some people have done inner work, so they're not as much grief inside. And some people haven't done hardly any, and they're just, they can't function because they're, they're so in that state of woundedness you know, whether it's that victim feeling or the emotional sadness that's, that's always there, you know, it's like it, ne it just never ends. It never goes away. And it's so intense and overwhelming and debilitating for some people. Okay. I know this. That's what my life was. I was debilitated. I could, I could feel my sadness 100% of my time, you know, my, in my life. And it wasn't until going through all the emotions that the well of grief started to, you know, getting, you know, dissipating and clearing and healing all of that. And so for when people are trying to get through this, it's like to understand that it, there's a lot in there. And no one has to go all the way through. Just, you know, just do what, what you can, but, but open the heart to that and drop in and lose the mind and drop into the feeling so that you are knowing the sadness, not just feeling it and thinking a story, you have to know it without story. You have to know it without judgment. You have to know it with full awareness and consciousness and the souls in the body so that you can get through that. Okay. But yeah, the well of grief is intense. The, the sadness is intense and the whole world's in some state of, you know, despair, helpless, hopeless, despair, sad, despondent, you know, anxiety, all that stuff. And when we clear out that well of grief, you won't be feeling those feelings. It'll be over. This is why we do what we do at Spirits Acceleration. It's all about healing the wounding, all that emotion. So, Bonnie, this group clearing called Too Broken to Be Fixed, you will probably be um, healing all of the components that you've mentioned in today's episode, um, you know, including grief and sadness and other similar types of emotions. And mm -hmm. I do want to talk to you about interferences and obviously you will be clearing out those as well the past lives subconscious issues mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff but I, I do want to ask you specifically about actual interferences that yes. are actually keeping and wanting to keep people in this brokenness state and and keeping us into the, in that victim mentality that if you're in that it's going to be much harder to even feel empowered enough to even do anything to help yourself. Right, so exactly. do you want to talk about the various interferences that keep us in the brokenness? There are many, but let's start off with implants. Okay. Only because there are people in the world who have the abilities, the powers, the capacities, the know-how to interfere with people. They get implanted, blockages happen. So we got the one percenters. These are the people who own the world. Then you have your military government and then you have um, alien implants. All of these implants can affect you in ways you have no clue. You can be blocked and inhibited. You can be stuck in emotions. A lot of the implants that are happening that are coming from like the alien stuff, you, some people have been tracked, some people have been abducted for lifetimes, okay? Some people have been implanted because it's a scientific study on what, you know, on what, how it will affect you, what you'll do, how you'll think, how you'll be, how you'll feel, how you respond, how you react. And nobody really cares about you as the individual. All they care about is, oh, if we implant this and we put that blockage in the heart and they can't ever feel love, what's, what's going to happen? Oh, let's check this out for a couple of lifetimes. Okay. So you have all these, you know, studies happening. And then with one percenters and um, government, there is an intent, as people know, to depopulate, okay? So 
and and also keep keeping people enslaved, people disempowered, people keep them poor, keep them in need, keep them in fear. So implants will help to do that. Okay. So again, you got the government, military, and one percenters. All of these beings and different. They're all different, and. There are government things happening. There are alien stuff happening with the government. There's interactions. So all of these are meant to keep a person um, from really embodying, embracing their true authentic self, okay? Stay weak, stay broken, stay enslaved, stay afraid, stay shattered, and you'll never be empowered. And eventually you'll just die. And then, you know, you won't be adding to the the uh, population and and everything that's happening, you know, now. So get rid of people, you know, get them, get them gone and, or keep them enslaved, keep them disempowered. Okay. So that's the, impl that's very, very briefly on implants. All right. And then we have things like discarnates, dead people, people who have died. Here's the thing. I remember when I first started doing shamanism, shamanic healing, I used to see, you know, just a few people in there. And then as I got deeper into it, pretty soon it was like, whoa, 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 all righty, here's what's up. I don't care what your emotion is. If you've been, let's just say you've been, you grew up with alcoholic parents and abused emotionally, you're going to have discarnates in there that also grew up with, a, with alcoholic parents having the same kind of issues. If you've been raped or violated or molested, anything sexual, you're going to have victims of that in you. If you've been, um, had parents that were abusive, hateful, um, hurtful, you're going to have that. If you had abandonment issues, rejection issue, every emotion you have, you will have discarnates attached to that emotion. Remember, frequencies, you know, energy frequencies vibrate at a, at a frequency level. So whatever wounding you have, you become the, the host for other discarnates who didn't go into the light, who are hanging out on the earth plane that are needing, wanting to be connected. So they'll come into your body and attached to all those emotions. What it does is it intensifies your wounding, your pain, and sometimes when you're, you know, you're, you're feeling these other beings and they're interfering, you know? It's like you're doing the work for them, you know what I mean? You're doing their inner work, your inner work, and it takes away a lot longer. So you have all these uh, discarnates, and you have discarnates that could be coming in to interfere, to block you. Sometimes you have people who think they're helping you, okay? So the discarnate thing is really huge, huge. And then we have things like inter uh, curses and castings and spells and hexes and charms, voodoo, sorcery, wizardry, witchcraft, um, Satanism, all these other means that we've opened the door to the powers of darkness, okay? So when we've opened those doors and everybody has, this is the thing, okay? Think about this. Have you ever wanted to curse somebody? Did you ever get mad at somebody want to flip them off or wish them ill will? Or did you ever intentionally like, whoa, I want to create a charm. I want love. But you weren't doing it with the light. You were doing it with the, with the darkness, okay? So all these charms and curses and castings and spell, all these things also affect you. I have people all the time Family curses, past life curses, interferences, clans, groups of people, covenants, cursing and casting on people. All that stuff, interference, interference, interferes with us. So, I mean, we have all these things. And then, this is so crazy. So then you have situations where you are, you know, like in your past lives, you've done atrocities, you caused harm. And now you got to believe, oh my goodness, I'm so bad, I should be punished. I, I deserve to suffer. I've done atrocities, oh, you know? And then you, then you anchor in all that belief that you deserve to suffer, you got to be punished, you should be tortured, um, all of that. And then you punishing yourself in your subconscious, okay? And then you have other people's beliefs, other people's emotions, believing too, oh, you need to be suffered, you're bad, you know, you're gonna, we're going to torture you, we're going to punish you. I mean, Cynthia, it just goes on and on and on and on and on, okay? People have no clue all of these friggin' interferences. And, and then you got the dark force stuff where there's minions and demons and servants and different things that are interfering with you, trying to stop you. Then you can have things like bindings around you. You can have ropes and chains around you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, it just, it's unending. It's, it's just crazy. And Cynthia, it's like, for me, it was a journey of, dis of discovering all of these things. You know what I mean? It was like, I started, like, I wasn't, when I went to the desert for those four years, 
uh, that were also in the movie that I'm in, Awaken Soul to Soul. And that was when I really started getting into the dark forest stuff because one of the men, the 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 audio guy, I can't remember which one it was, but he had something attacking him. And so I helped him. And that that was when I really began to see all that dark force stuff that was happening. And then over the years, you know, this was back in 2009. And but over the years, I just kept tracking more and more and more. And that's when I started discovering so much of the interferences. It's just so crazy. It's crazy. But I'm telling you, you know, take this stuff out and it just makes life easier. And then you can do your own inner work. But when you've got interferences that are actually impeding you and attacking you and undermining you and cursing you, and you don't know it, you can do all your healing work you want, but you'll never be free. See, that's the thing about this work. It's like, wow, we see things, know things that nobody else sees and knows and never even heard of. Okay. So again, you don't just have a few discarnates in you. You got hundreds, hundreds attached to every bit of your wounding. Okay. Think about that. And then, of course, all your own undermining, all, all your subconscious stuff that's in your subconscious beliefs and carryover from your subconscious. So that's just a little tidbit of interferences. A little tidbit. <laughs> I mean, it's one I can go into for hours, okay? Yeah. Hours yeah. These are topic, okay? <laughs> yeah. So I know you can only get into these topics a, a little bit briefly, um, in today's episode, but you have mentioned these and talked more deeply about them before in other videos. So I'm going to try my best to find um, some of those, especially in live Q and A's, you've talked about quite a few of them in more detail. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to leave links for people who want to know more. And of course we did do two podcast episodes on curses and there was a lot of information there. Um, so mm -hmm. I will just letting people know if you want to go more into that, and uh, I'll leave links below, watch those videos to, to go deeper into it. So Bonnie, with everything that you just mentioned, uh, there, there's obviously a lot to the clearing and, and getting people back into feeling whole and complete and not feeling broken. And I, I kind of feel like this is a topic we, we really need to get into this next question I have, because I think it's really important uh, because sometimes I feel like people might be too traumatized to really do their own inner work. And so they actually yes, need yeah, yes. clearings mm. first to get rid of like all that stuff you talk about. You don't even need to do your inner work for, for like the, like the um, curses and you can't really do any inner work for that anyway. Right. Wow. You, you need that wow. help, the implants, right. the different various things. And once those wow. are, a lot of those are cleared, then a person could be like more stable and they could actually go through yes. the process that you're talking about of your inner, yep. uh, your own inner healing and feeling and going through it. So yeah, uh, yeah, let us know about, have you, what is your experience of that? Like how people that are too traumatized to really do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I've had a lot of, a lot of people, I've had multiple personality people, um, you know, people that were severely traumatized, they would black out, pass out, whatever. I'm more talking severe, okay? So these people, when, when we have that severity, a person is not capable. They are not able to do that, what I would call our, you know, doing our inner work, you know, meaning coming in and facing and feeling because they're too traumatized. I remember one time I had a woman who had a car, like she had a head-on car accident. She couldn't get, she couldn't get past it. So clearly I couldn't take her through you know, the emotion of that because it was too intense. Okay. So we have to clear out a lot of the emotion when someone, like, for example, PTSD, when someone's got severe PTSD, you're not going to take them through an emotion. It's not going to happen. Okay. So what happens though, is when someone's really severely damaged, it, first of all, you got to know this is a journey. This is going to take time. Okay. And it's a commitment, but what, you got something better to do more important. I don't think so. So what happens with someone severely, severely traumatized, bring them in, start working gently because sometimes if you take out too much, that's traumatizing because a person is living in this trauma. They're living in this PTSD. It's in them. And then you start releasing these energies and, and it starts to change. They don't know how to relate to the changes if you go too fast, okay? Okay. So it's nice and easy, gentle, start taking out discarnates, start taking out interferences, lifting curses, spells, castings, start releasing uh, implants, 
again, gently, go slowly, gently, see that the body recalibrate, stabilize, and then then another do another session and an unraveling. So you take your time and ultimately you start getting into the deep emotions. And once you start clearing out emotions, pretty soon that person will be able, they'll be stable. They won't be, their world won't be rocked. They won't be, um, you know, having that PTSD reactions and they'll be more able to be in the world. They'll be more able to start dropping into some of their feelings. But again, it take it does take time. And I think it's important for people to understand that. And because we all, we all, we all want to be done. I remember way back, People go, how long is this going to take? <laughs> I even did that. How long is this going to take? I'm only going to work at this for maybe two years, then I'm done, okay? I want to be done by then. Well, 50 years later, I'm still unraveling, okay? <laughs> so people, it's not about the outcome. It's about the journey. It's about getting, every time something gets cleared, you do come in deeper into your body. You do open up your heart more. And it doesn't mean that other things won't keep other, you know, because the wounding is going to get activated. That's what's up, no matter what. That's what our time period is all about. We just keep moving one step in front of the other. And sometimes it'll feel like, oh, my God, I did all that work. But I'm now I'm feeling this. Well, here's what happens. This is another thing that's really important. As we're taking out layers of wounding, what's underneath that's been pushed down is no longer pushed down. It's rising up. Okay, so if we take off this layer and all of a sudden, boom, here's this, it can feel like, oh, my word, I'm being traumatized again. You know, it's like, oh, man, I feel like I have two steps back, three forward, two back. And it's like, well, that's what it feels like sometimes. But, you know, just keep moving forward because this is the lifetime to do it. This is the time. You know, we got support and help from the new paradigm, the light of the, the world, new world, new earth. Everything's helping us to move through and release energies much more quickly now. So. Again, it just, it's like, yes, yeah, that's true. It feels that way, but keep going, keep going. Pretty soon it's like, whoa, yeah, now I, now I feel momentum. Now I'm feeling like, wow, I feel, I'm actually feeling happy. Oh, wow, I feel like I really like being here. Whoa, what a concept. Oh, wow, I'm warm in my body. Whoa, I see things like, more clearly. I mean, you know, it's phenomenal, really, but uh, it is a journey. So when we got severe, severely um, heart, hurt people, it's, it's, you know, we have to be gentle and kind and supportive and easy and, and take, take it uh, one step at a time and let the person recalibrate so they can actually feel the shifts and changes. They can feel the positiveness. Then there's more willingness to keep going. So you did talk about the new paradigm and the energies that are on the planet now that will assist us in doing all this work. And you talk about the new paradigm. So in the new paradigm, is everybody completely whole? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. We're not there yet. <laughs> We're not in the new paradigm. We're at the precipice. We're at the light. Okay. It's shining. It's bringing all the wounding up. Ultimately, when, I, when I'm tracking and sensing the energy of the frequency, because more people will be more heartfelt. Okay. We're not going to clean up all the wounding, everything. That's not going to happen. That's la la land. There ain't no la la land here. Okay. There's still death and dying and whatever. So there's still losses, betrayal, all that stuff. So what happens though is when the heart is more open, which is what's going to happen, you can't enter into the new frequency of the new paradigm with darkness in your heart, meaning shattered, broken, victimization, poor me, blame game, you know, all that stuff. Okay. Hating, greed, all that. What's going to happen is the heart will be more open. When the heart is more open, we, we naturally, organically feel more connected to each other. And in that, we don't have the desire to cause harm. We're not feeling, oh my God, you're being successful. I'm not. So I'm going to take you down. I'm going to hurt you because you have more than I do. Okay. Or the jealousies and envies. It's not, it's not that everything's going to be gone, but the intensity levels will be so low we will be able to um, communicate more clearly, express ourselves more clearly without the hurting and the greed energy and the selfishness and the blaming. We can't live in that consciousness in the new paradigm. It doesn't work. Okay. You, you'll be incarnating somewhere else. Go somewhere else. Plenty of places where you can go be evil and dark and nasty and hateful and poor me and all of that. Okay. But it won't be happening here. Okay. 
So yes, we know it'll look like it is now only different in that there'll be more supportive. Like if someone is needs help, people will show up with open heart. Okay. Not nothing, not expecting something in return, but there's just that a different feeling. It's like a feeling that we have compassion for one another. We have love for one another. You know what I mean? Like when the heart's open, we're feeling that that's that energy frequency of unconditional love will be more in that. Like I, I am in a constant state of unconditional love, but I've done massive work. Okay. And <laughs> even that, I was talking to somebody about that. They go, what about so-and-so? And I don't, won't say who, but even so-and-so, it doesn't matter. I, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I feel unconditional. I may not like somebody. Okay. But the love, the unconditional love is there. So that would be more in that state of unconditional love and the, the, the feeling of separation and separateness. And this is my clan, my family, and we're only going to take care of our own family. It's like, that's not what's going to be happening. There'll be more openness, more supportiveness. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a different energy we never lived in before in, in all of the civilizations and the collapses of humanity that have happened. We've never had this was coming in the new paradigm. We've not had that. So that's what's coming for us. And this is another reason why to do your own inner work. Because if you don't, see all this dark energy, that stuff, all that poor me, the wounding, the greed, the hatred, the victimization, all of it, atrocities, you know. So trying to pass through the veils, you can't pass through with blackness. You have to drop it. But you can pass through those veils and come into the new paradigm. So... And a lot of people might be thinking, oh, well, I don't want to be here anyway. Life sucks. I hate being alive, you know, take me out, whatever. But see, that's your humanness. That's not your soul level. Your soul wants to wake up. Your soul wants to enter into the new paradigm. Your soul wants to go back into the oneness of pure aware awareness where we're all to get where it's all one. And so you might be thinking, well, I don't care. I'm not going to incarnate. You know, I'll go somewhere else. Well, that's not what's up. See, when the soul, when the soul is no longer in a body, it's making these choices and decisions to, you know, to incarnate and to, to learn and to grow and expand and to wake up. That's what it's all about. So your soul will keep doing that. So you might as well just get that now. You might as well wake up to the truth that your soul wants to wake up and it's going to keep incarnating, even though you might be thinking, oh, no. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> so you might as well do your inner work and wake up and live and be happy and come and be doing what you're here to do, which is share the gift of you and, you know, be, be free, be free to do, do life, explore, experience, dance, sing, share, whatever that is, but, you know, free basically. So Bonnie, you do have two uh, group energy clearings in May that will assist people in this. Cause the first one is a May 10th. It's actually called journeying to the womb clearing mom's energy. Mm. And I feel like this would definitely help people mm. to heal the brokenness as well. Cause oh, we take yeah. in a lot yeah, yeah, yeah. while we're in the womb. And then of course, too broken to be fixed is May 24th. But do you want to talk a little bit about the mom one and that as well? Yeah, this is another thing. Okay. So think about this. You come in when you, as a feed, as a, as you start being formed in your mother's womb. Okay. You are literally taking on and feeling because you don't know the difference. You're in this energy frequency and your mother's got all her wounding her unconscious issues whatever's happened for her you're taking it on and you it doesn't just leave your body because you're born or because you don't want to be like somebody like your mom or your dad it doesn't leave your body so you're living your life with the frequency the energetic frequencies of your mother's wounding all of that whatever that is it could be fear anxiety stress worry Fear of dogs, fear of cats, whatever. It doesn't matter, okay? Um, you know, and you're, you're holding that. So by clearing out the mother's energy that you took on in the womb, it sets you free from your mother. It sets you free from her emotions. And then what's left is you. And then you can, you know, do your inner work. So it's to me, it's a very, very important clearing, vital clearing. Once again, that's on May 10th and too, too Broken to be Fixed is May 24th. I'll leave links to all that in the description. Thank you so much for yeah. this uh, episode. I think it, you went in deep for, with a lot. We covered a lot of different details and uh, different components to why people would feel the way that they feel and, and also the steps they could take because there's so many different things that you could do. Uh, you know, for example, you have 
200, over 200 clearings, that would be very relevant to this topic. So I encourage mm -hmm. people to check out the whole library, not just mm -hmm. the links that I'll be leaving in the description. I'm going to be leaving definitely the very relevant ones, but um, if everybody has their own issues and it, definitely check out the library. There, like I said, there's over 200 different topics that you could go through and find things that would be really good for you to help you get to back to that, to that whole state right. of being. Yep. So, all right. Um, once again, links are below. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like the video, subscribe, comment, let us know what you think. And if you're watching this or listening to this on Apple or Spotify or any of those podcast platforms, leave us a review. It definitely helps us out. All right. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Bye, everyone. All right.